worship his holy name. We thank you, God, for this privilege that he has given us today. Amen. We're here that we can look at each other and can tell that God is good. Amen. We can tell that God's mercy is established, that his grace has been poured out upon us because he's kept us another day. Amen. And we're fully aware that he didn't have to do this. Yes. Say this is a common saying, but it's true that he didn't have to keep us. But he chose to keep, keep us anyhow. Yeah. Amen. Even though I'm not worthy of being kept, he kept, he kept you. And we thank the Lord today for this day. Amen. We give all the glory and honor and praise unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is the one that is worthy of all the praise and we worship him today. We are gathered here. This is our worship. Amen. This is not just what we do on Sunday. Amen. But we do some of this all through the week. Amen. If you're like me, you didn't wait until today to start to worship God. You didn't start worshiping the Lord this morning, getting ready for service. You may have. Amen. But I was worshiping God yesterday afternoon. And on Tuesday. And on Thursday. Amen. And in the middle of the night, I still got God on my mind. Amen. I want the Lord on my mind at all times. And so we praise God because he's worthy and he is an awesome God. Amen. We, so we, we owe him all of the praises. We do give double honor to our very fine pastor and bishop, Bishop J.A.D. We give double honor to Elder Johnson, to all the ministry staff. Elder Collins is in the house with us today. Amen. Amen. I haven't seen him in a long time. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all who may be visiting with us today. We're glad to have you in the house of the Lord. This is a special day today. Amen. One would call it a high day. The fathers would call it a great day. So to all of the fathers in the house, happy Father's Day. somebody else but that's not who you are amen I see different preachers preaching and earlier on and I've been preaching for a couple of years not as long as this young man here amen but I've learned just to be who I am and Elder Collins preaches the way he preaches God bless him Mr. Ray preaches the way he preaches. And Mr. Butler preaches the way he preaches. God bless him. Amen. But I'm going to be who I am. Because when I start trying to act like Minister Ray, it don't go over so good. 
Because it's like we shut the What is he doing? Amen. Or if I try to start singing like Elder Johnson, it doesn't make no sense. That's not me. Amen. So I've learned to be who I am. Amen. Apostle Paul said, I am who I am. Amen. Whether you like me or don't, there's one that's more important, no disrespect to you, than you, and that is God. He's the one that has made me. He formed me. Amen. Before him, there was no God. As the scripture was read, and after him, there shall be none. Amen. I alone am God, he said. Beside me, there is no other. Amen. So let's look a little at the word of God. I have a few scriptures in my mind that I'm going to ask you to turn to. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53. Turn to that scripture. We're going to read there. And then we're going to read John. Hallelujah. John chapter 14. Yes. John chapter 14. We'll read a few scriptures from the first part of that. And then we're going to go to Acts. Everybody likes Acts. <laughs> and we're going to read a few verses from Acts. Amen. So, we're going to read a few verses. First part of Isaiah 53. When you have it, please stand to your feet for the reading of the word. We're going to read from the book of John, the 14th chapter. And we're going to read a few verses Thank you, Jesus. from John. And then we're going to read a few verses from the book of Acts, the first chapter. <clears throat> the scriptures I'd like to read to you here in just a few in each of these chapters. It won't be long. Amen. Isaiah 53 verses 1 through 4. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. Somebody say root. root. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let your, not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And in the book of Acts, the first chapter, reading from the ninth through the eleventh verse. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, 
which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You may be seated. We thank God for the reading of the scriptures. Amen. We thank God for the word of God because the word of God is written that we can learn, that we can grow. Amen. That we can get a better understanding about ourselves, about life. Amen. About many things. Today is Father's Day and I give great honor to my father, Elliot uh, Abraham Rousey Jr., who raised me up in the church. And I think about it a lot because I say, you know, I wonder where I would be if I wasn't blessed to have the parents that I had that raised me up in the truth, that raised me up to know what was right and what was wrong, that loved me and that took care of me. Even when I did wrong, they corrected me, and they, they, they encouraged me, and they helped me in more ways than I can even imagine thinking. And I think about him, and I, I think about a, a father, and I think about what I learned from him as being a father. And I remember a statement that uh, I had heard some time ago about fathers, and it was a powerful statement to me, and, and it goes something like this. My father never told me uh, how to live. He just did it and let me watch him do it. Think about that. My father didn't have to tell me a whole lot. He just did it and let me watch him live it. Your actions speak much louder than your words. The things that you do with your life mean more than what you say with your mouth. Me personally, I'm not talking about anybody, but me personally, I'm over preachers. If you understand what I'm saying, I'm over preachers. You probably understand what I mean. I'm over that. Why? Because preachers are, have a great ability to talk. But what are you living? Is where the question what does your life reflect? Even though you can pull the scriptures together and you can pull things from Genesis and tie it to, to, to James and come back over to uh, Habakkuk and then go back over to 2 Peter and come and, and, and I've seen the, uh, preachers tie things together so beautiful and I, I couldn't even imagine and make my mind blow. I'm about ready to have a seizure. The way they bring the word together so beautiful. And you, and you see how they break it down and it oh, just brings tears to my eyes. Beautiful. And then they go do something that the man walking down the street that don't know nothing about God, don't believe in God, won't do. And, and I look at that and I see that and, 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 I, and I, I am over the talk because it's all about what you're doing and not about what you're saying. What you're, or let me put it this way, what you're saying only has value when what you're doing supports the things that you're saying. Yes, you're supposed to speak when you're a preacher. Amen. But the actions of my life have to be stronger than what I am saying. If I don't say anything, but I'm at work every day, that's telling you something. If I don't say anything, sometimes our pastor talks about how women love to hear. They just want to hear you tell them that they love you. Huh? Yeah, but what is he doing? That man is up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day going to work. Bringing home his money. He's not running around all over the place. He's a man. He's taking care of his family. He's providing for them. He's doing everything. Whatever you need, he's able to provide the funds for it. That's a man. If he's too tired to say I love you, he's showing you that he loves you. Isn't that right? Oh, hey, the brothers ought to say, man, I am a softball. Oh, my goodness, I'm throwing softballs out here. Oh, not even taking the, that's an underhanded 
softball. They got one out of the ball. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And get out there deep. There you go. But it's really all about what you're doing and not what you're saying. Yeah, when I when I watched my father do a lot of things, a lot of things, he taught me a bunch of stuff. But one of the things that he did was he, he knew how to teach me patience. And when I was going through it, I didn't like it so much. So one of the things that uh, he used to do, and it wasn't his fault, it was just the way things were. I ran on, I was involved in athletics. I was very athletic in high school. So I ran track and I played soccer and basketball and I was always doing something. But I didn't drive. I was a teenager, 14, 13, 15 years old. I started, actually started running when I was in sixth grade. So we would go away on these trips and I, and I really hated it when we went out of town for an out of town meet. Because then that means we would come back after the buses had left. Because we lived on the out part, we lived on the outside part of the county, so you had to take a bus to get home. And in my household, there was only one car. And guess who had the one car? Dad. And Dad did not work down the street. He worked in the city, which was an hour away. So whenever I got finished with a track meet and I get off with all of my other uh, fellow athletes and classmates, we would be standing there and everybody's parents would be just covered up and picking them up. Yes. And there goes Johnny, there goes Jimmy, there goes this one and that one. And everybody, and more days than I can count, I was the left. Now, it was, it, what would mean it so bad was it wasn't it, it was the lateness but it was also because i was the only black thing on the whole team so here's the only black boy at an all white school waiting for his daddy to come up and i would wait and he was almost never on time i would get to the I remember one time in particular, I went inside the school and called my mother. She said, he's coming, he'll be there after he finishes work. It got dark. The custodian came, cleaned the school, and went home. My school teacher was in there doing her lesson plan, came out. I was still outside. She left, went home, came back to get something. I was still standing there. She said, do you want, she felt so bad for me. I waited there, I, I promise you it was 10 o'clock at night. And I was standing out there by myself, <laughs> waiting for my daddy to come. He did it again to me another time. He did it one time when he dropped me off down in Long Island City to put a bid in. And I was there during my summer break. And he dropped me off and he said, I'll be, I'll be back. He said, say right back. He said, I'll be back. And he dropped me off at about 7.30 in the morning. And I went into this building so that I could go ahead and put in the bids. And I went in and put the bids in. And he said he was going to do a job and he'll be back. And I, and I went in there and, and put the bid in and waited a couple hours. They went through the process. Got all the paperwork done, got finished, came out, it was around lunchtime, he wasn't there. So I'm walking around Long Island City back and forth, eating lunch, walking around, ate some more lunch, walking around, walking around. People were leaving and going home. And I'm walking around, walking around. I promise you, he came and got me 9.30 that night. He rode up, and of course, I'm mad. So I don't know how much patience it taught me. But I was thinking about that, and I said, you know what, it's very interesting, because he said he was coming to get me. Now, I had in my mind what that meant. But he said he was coming to get me. But you know what? He came. He didn't come when 
I wanted them to. But it came. So the message today is just like he said it. Just like he said he would. Whatever it is that you have before him, just like he said he would. Keep that in your mind. Just like he said he would. Not like you think he would, but just like he said he would. He came just like he said he would. It was established in the scriptures that a child will be born, a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And when he came, just like he said he was, he didn't come the way they wanted him to come. And because he didn't look like the way they wanted him to look, huh? he came. But he came, just like he said he would. What throws us off is what we think we want. The scripture I read in John that said, that Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a mansion for you. No. He didn't say that. What did he say? He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. Go to a mansion in the sky. Mansion. Did he say he would give you a mansion? He said he'd give you a place. But he didn't say, now maybe it is a mansion. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm saying that he never said it was going to be a mansion. But in all the songs we have, Go on to my mansion in the sky. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm just reading the scripture. Don't, 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 don't get mad at me. A lot of people are mad now. They're upset now. They're, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Where's my mansion at? I've been around here for 45 years. Are you trying to tell me I don't have a mansion in the sky waiting on me? I don't know. Does it matter? What does it matter? If you don't have any mansion in the sky, what does it matter? All I want to do is be there. Huh? I just want to be there. Huh? Amen. So the point is, is that it's just like he said he would. Just like he said he would. Taylor has taken some interest now in... Uh, Taylor, our youngest daughter, has taken an interest now in growing, in growing uh, garden. She's planting some zucchini and some, some tomatoes and, and some peppers and cucumbers and all this good stuff. And she's got a little garden going on at the house. And she comes home and she checks it and she, she looks at it and, and she waters it and makes it, she's getting plenty of sun. And, and she's making sure that everything's taken care of properly. And, and the plants have only been there for a little while. And they're starting to grow up pretty nice. They're starting to grow. And she's looking at the fruit. And she's starting to see the tomatoes come up. And some zucchini popping up. And some different things going on. And, 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 we, and we praise. We praise the fruit. Don't we? Uh, that's why you put the, that's why you put the, the, the plant there. Because we praise the fruit. And so we, 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 we recognize the fact that this plant is a, a whole unit. There's a lot here, right? You have, you have the stalks and you have the fruit, whatever it is coming, that is growing off the top. And then you have the, the main stem, or the, I guess we call it the stalk, the stalk of the plant. But you see, there's something going on with that plant. 
that you don't even pay attention to. And the reason why you don't pay attention to it is because you can't see it. You can't see the root structure. You can't see what is going on underneath the soil. But you can tell what is going on underneath the soil by what is coming up on the top of the soil. Isn't that right? So when you begin to enjoy the product of the fruit, and we praise the fruit, no one praises the root structure. No one says, those must be some good roots down there. No one goes crazy over the root structure. Why? Because it's under the ground. Why? Because the root structure has a job to do. The root structure's job is not to be seen. Y'all with me? The root structure is not to get praised. Huh? The root structure's job is to be recognized by the fruit that is born on top. And if the root structure is doing what it's supposed to do, then it's tapping into the nutrients and the moisture. It's reaching. It's digging. The roots are climbing and growing down deep. Looking for what? For what the fruit needs on top. The glory of the fruit is reflective of the depth of the root structure in the soil. The hardiness of the stalk is reflective of its connection with the root. If the root structure dies out, then the stalk is going to get thin. And when the stalk gets thin, then the branches start to wither. And you don't see any flowers and you don't see any good things growing on the plant. But when you have a foundation of a group, great root structure, then you can count on the fact that whatever comes up in the top is going to be something that is worthy to be recognized and glorified. You see, my dad wasn't playing cards when I was waiting on him. My dad wasn't in a bar somewhere when I was waiting on him. My dad wasn't going off somewhere messing around while I was waiting on him. But while I was waiting on him, he was working. That man was working. That man worked harder than anybody I ever knew. He was working. He was working. Even though I didn't see it. He was working for my benefit. Because as time went on, and I needed something, I could call on my father. And he had been working. Huh? So much so that when I needed to go to school, he had the fruit. He had the substance to be able to afford it for me. And so I didn't have to, when I needed a vehicle, he was able to provide that. When I needed a suit, he was able to provide that. When I needed whatever it was I needed, he was able to provide that. He was my root structure. He was, that's what the purpose of a father is. A purpose of a father is to establish his family. You don't establish your family, hallelujah, by not working, by not providing, hallelujah. You don't establish your family by kicking your wife out of bed. You don't get to work. Hurry up now. But what you do, you get up, and you go to work. Huh? And when you work long enough, 
Even when you retire, Brother Cleo, you can't stop working, can you? Because it's in you. You can't just sit on the side and watch I Love Lucy. You want to do something. You want to get yourself involved somewhere. Why? Because it's a part of you. It's a part of you. So, so my father represented that structure for me. So that when I began to have a family and things needed to be done, I started going to work. It wasn't nothing about me sitting around doing nothing. I was getting ready to go to work. I didn't care where I worked when I first came down here. Couldn't find a job in a pie shop. I couldn't, nobody wanted to hire this black boy from New York. I couldn't find a job anywhere. First job I found was in a wastewater treatment plant. Yes, sir. You know, some of the stuff I did, there are people that won't do what I did. They'll walk away from me. I was so glad to get that little job, paid me a couple of, couple of dollars every two weeks. I was so glad to get it, but it made me glad twice. <laughs> glad to get it, and I was glad when I got hired at that that because I wanted to get out of there. But you know what? I wasn't going to leave that job until I had another one. I learned that, too. Don't leave what you got until you get something else. You got one bird in the hand, and you're going to throw it down and wait for another one. No. Hold that bird in the hand until you get another one. Then throw it down. The Lord blessed me to go from there and continue to go through my education and bless me to where I am now. But it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen because something fell out of the sky. It happened because you're dedicated to what you want to do and you have a vision and a purpose and your mindset on what you need to do. Amen. This is what has been established in a man. This is why a father is important, because a father provides that stability for his family. So today is Father's Day. It's not Trump Day. It's Father's Day. If your father will here to recognize what you bring to your family, huh? that you take care of your family, that you lift up your family, that you encourage your family. Amen. If you're a father. And if you're a man and you have a wife and you have children, you be a father. Be a father. Because the little things that you do, the sacrifices that you make, mean more to the people that you are making them for than you even realize. And you won't hear about it till later on. You may be an old man. But then your family will come to you and tell you what they remember you did a long time ago. Amen. But we let's get back to this about a, 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 a root. So in Isaiah, the Bible says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You know, when you start to talk about a root, there's nothing beautiful about a root. The, what, where the beauty comes in is the stalk and then the branches that come off, bearing fruit. So we recognize that what we have here is an example of not only the family structure, but we also have a, a relationship of Christ to us. Because the Lord said, the Lord said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Huh? If you abide in me, John 15 he said this, if you abide in me and I in you, you'll bear fruit. Amen. So what we are talking about is when you're dealing with, with this relationship, you see how Jesus, amen, is referred to as a root out of a dry ground. Because a lot of times, 
you'll see that the root has to do the ugly part. The root has to do the hard part. The root has to do the part that only the root can do. Because the branch can't do what the root can do. The branch can't go where the root can go. The branch can't handle what the root can handle. Whenever there is a storm, the root structure down low is digging deep. Amen. And it is our anchor so that even though the wind blows and even though the, the, the tempest and the rain comes down, that root is, is, is grounded. It is shattered. It's locked in. But it's not just locked in overnight. You see, that root's been digging for a long time. It's been digging down deep. And roots on a lot of established solid trees will spread out and they become entangled. So much so because they're searching everywhere for the moisture, for the nutrients that is needed for the rest of, of the tree. So uh, when we start talking about how good God is, we have to recognize that God has established a way for us to make it in. And he's established that way through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible said, Jesus and I and the Father are one. The reason why you can see it in your tomato plant, because when you see the stalk, the stalk is attached to the root. And there's not a place where there's a separation point. But they're continuous. They're one. The stalk is sewed in to that. You can't pull the stalk out, amen, and then put another stalk in top. The stalk and the root come together. When you want to pull a, a tomato plant out the ground, you grab the stalk and you pull it. And when you pull it, what are you going to get? You're going to get the roots. Huh? You're going to get the roots with it. You're not going to get the, just a stalk. You're going to get the whole thing. Why? Because it's one unit. The Lord has established this thing. He's established it so that we can call on him. And when we call on him, we have to, the only way we can reach God is through Jesus. The only way you're going to get to God is through Jesus. When you go back to the scriptures and you find and you see where the Israelites a long time ago, they got tired of listening to Moses. They, were, they had Moses with them, and Moses would talk to God. And, 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 and Moses would bring back the answer to the people. And the people after a while got tired of listening to Moses. They said, we don't want to listen to you, Moses. We want to go straight to God. Yeah. Huh? And so Moses brought that back to the Lord, and the Lord said, okay, bring him to the mountain. Huh? Bring him to the mountain. And when you bring him to the mountain, I'm going to sit on the top of the mountain yeah. and let him come talk to me. And by the time the Lord got finished tearing that mountain up, when he got up on top of there, the people said, we don't want to talk to God. We want to talk to Moses. Jesus is our reflection of that. You see, we want to, I want to go to God. Anybody who wants to go to God can't deny Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah, because Jesus and God are one. And if you want something from God, you've got to call on the name of Jesus. Because that's the only way you're going to get to God. You ain't going to bypass Jesus and go straight to God. Because you cannot handle God on your own. Because what you're talking about is a total difference. You can't be fruit attached to the root. You can't be tomato stuck in the ground going straight to the root. You can't handle it. It's not designed for it. You can't prosper that way. That tomato will not grow if it's right directly to the root. It won't do it. It's not designed for it. It's only designed to be attached to the vine. And it's designed to be attached to the vine because the vine is the one that's attached to the root. The, the root is the only way to get the root through to the root.
the vine. It's for that root to be attached to the vine. And that root gives the vine what it needs to deliver as the, as the branch can do. That root, the branch cannot handle the nutrition straight from the root. It won't do it. It won't do it. You try it if you want it, but it's not going to work. It's not designed for it. Why? Because it's too close to the ground. It, the, the, the things that the fruit needs is not going to be supplied directly from that root. So it's got to go through the vine. It's got to go through the vine. Jesus is our vine. He said, I am the vine. You are the branch. Hallelujah. So what he said was that if you stay attached to me, if you stay attached to me, he said, then I'm going to provide the fruit for you. Hallelujah. But what he said in John was that I'm going to prepare a place for you. So what does this mean? The words that he said are not said just on his own. But he and the Father are one. So what he says, the Father agrees in. Hallelujah. And so whatever he has said and established has been recorded and locked down within God. So no matter what things may look like, it's going to come to pass because it's going to happen just like he said. He said he was going to come through. Believe him because his word cannot fail. What? Right? He said, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm here to encourage you today. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, he know in the way he know. How do we know the way? He said, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. Just like he said. Hallelujah. When he got finished telling the disciples, to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. He said when he got there, before they got there, he, he showed himself unto them in a cloud, received them out of their sight. And they were standing up, looking up into the heavens. And then there was an angel stood by. Uh, two men stood by and said, why are you standing here gazing up into heaven? Huh? But he said, this same Jesus, the one that you seen him go up into heaven. This same one is coming back in like manner. I'm here to let you know it's been thousands of years that this since this happened, but just like we are Just like he said. Maybe not the way you say, but the way he said. It's about his word. It's not about my thoughts. I have things in my mind. I think it should be this way. This is what brings about division. Because I think a certain way. I think, sir, I have certain preferences. So there's things that I think should be happening this way or that way. But it's not about what the way I think it should be done. It's about what he said. We have to go back to what he said. We take what he said and we interpret it. So now we all have mansions. But he didn't say that. He said we have is a place for us. So thank God for your place. If your place is a mansion, I really don't care. It doesn't matter because I just want to be there. I just want to be there. See, we got to get our mind off of the material thing. Because we go to material too much. We want a mansion. Why do you need a mansion? heard this before. What about people who already have mansions? What do you need a mansion for? What about the people who already have mansions? There are people who live in houses that are 50,000 square foot houses. Swimming pools and tennis courts and they got mansions. How are you going to entice them with a mansion? Well, like I got, I got one right down the street. I'll fly my helicopter to my mansion. You know how many billionaires there are in this country? Do you know how many millionaires and billionaires there are? They've got mansions. So how are you going to say, hey, you want a mansion in this country? I got one. Huh? The 
point is, is that we, we think material. You know why? Because we're broke. We got no money. So we want a mansion. Because uh, it entices us. Oh, I want a mansion in sky. How about be with God? How about being with the Lord? How, how about what's important? It's not your mansion. What's important is being with the Lord forever. That's what's important. Hallelujah. Just like he said he would. He's going to do just like he said he would. He said he would do the wrong. Just like he said he would, he's coming back. Just like he said he would, he is going to answer my prayer just like he said he would. Hallelujah. Just like he said he would. He said, ask what you will, and it shall be done just like he said he would. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Just like he said he would. He said he would never leave you, neither will he forsake you. Just like you said he would. Hallelujah. Just like you said you would. You said that you would be, you're the first and you're the last. You'll be with me to the end of the world. Just like you said you would. Hallelujah. I believe him just like he said he would. I got to get my mind off of what I want him to do. And I got to get my mind on the spirit. Hallelujah. Just like he said you would. He said if you come on me, I'll answer. Just like he said he would. You got to believe him. It doesn't happen. Not, it may not happen the way you want it to happen. But just like he said he would, he'll do it. Hallelujah. Just like he said he would. Hallelujah. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. He's made promises to me that he has not made. Just like he said he would. He did it. Hallelujah. He did it. I didn't know how he was going to do it, but he did it. Just like he said he would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not believe me, but he let me know how much money I would make at one point. Just like he said he would. Yes, he did. He exceeded it. My salary went to a place I never thought it would go. Just like he said he would. Just like he said he would. Hallelujah. Just like he said he would. Hallelujah. When I was a little boy, probably about 10 years old, I used to pray every night. Lord, one day, I want to be saved. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And I want to have a beautiful saved wife. And beautiful saved children. Just to be saved. I didn't have it overnight, but he gave me just what I had asked for. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. I didn't know where I didn't know I was coming to South Carolina. Yeah, that's right. Had no idea, had no interest in coming to South Carolina, to be honest with you. Yeah. But the Lord changed all of that interest around. Yeah. Isn't that something? He did. Yeah. I didn't know what he was doing, I didn't know how he was doing it, but just like he said he would, he did it. God had blessed. And, I, and I'm here to encourage you today to know that whatever he has told you, he will perform it. He is faithful to do what he said. He will do it. Hallelujah. All you got to do is put your trust in him. Put your confidence in him. And he will do it. Hallelujah. If you need an airplane, he'll provide an airplane. Not if you want an airplane. If you need one, he'll provide one for you. Huh? He'll do whatever it is that you're needing. He'll do it. He'll do it. Do y'all believe that? I'm encouraged today because I know that I'm connected to the body. I'm encouraged today amen, because I have some fruit in my life that shows me that God is working. And when I look at the fruit, I get happy. And I don't get happy because of anything that I've done. But I get happy because I know that there's a connection between me and God. And I know, hallelujah, it reassures me 
that I'm connected to Jesus. That reassures me. You should be reassured when you look at your life and you see that there's fruit in your life and you recognize it, you can take the cup. You can be encouraged to know that I must be connected to the vine. Because look at what God is doing. I don't know how I got where I am, but I know that I'm only here by the grace of God. And because I'm here, I know that I'm connected to the vine. As long as I stay connected to the vine, then I know the vine is connected to the root. And you are not going to be able to pull that root out of that ground. That root was established before the foundations of the earth. That root is the same root that formed the sun, the moon, the star, the sky, that caused the mountains, hallelujah, that covered the valley, that made the that root that sprung up out of the dry ground. That root of Jesse, hallelujah, that was called down in 42 generations. Way before he showed up, he was there undercover. You didn't see him. You didn't feel it. But he was there. Thank God. Because I'm learning that all I need to do is hold on. All I need to do is hold on. Because what I know is true. What I know for 100% sure is that you're never going to get that root out of that ground. You're never going to pull that root out of that ground. Throughout eternity, you'll never get it out of that ground. So the moment this stays there, I'm going to stay connected to it. I'm going to stay connected to it through Jesus. And Jesus is, and the Father are one. And as long as I hold on to Jesus, and I call on his name. I know that through his name, through him, through him, hallelujah, I'm going to be connected to the root. That's why whatever we do is word or deed. We do it all in the name of Jesus. Because in the name of Jesus, that when you go down in water, there's only one thing that can wash away your sin. Hallelujah. There's only one thing. Hallelujah. It's not about the water, but it's about the spirit. It's about God. The only thing, hallelujah, that can heal you is Jesus. The power of God doesn't mean anything else because he is the only one that formed things out of nothing. Who can do something out of nothing? Sister Shelley makes dresses. But she needs some material in order to make a dress. God don't need no material. God calls material out of the air. And he will go to the future. And there it is. God don't need no matches. God all by himself. He don't need you to bring nothing. He has it all in the palm of his hand. So whatever you need, God already has it. Does anybody here know? That the current of God, that the mental way. I'm not talking about your figure the way out. I'm talking about I want to talk to somebody where he has made a way.
by the answer. Where did it come from? It came from God. It came from God Almighty who brought your deliverance. God Almighty who heard your prayer. God Almighty. Not only because you respect His Son, you respect the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Salvation is in His name. Deliverance is in His name. Hallelujah. Prosperity is in His name. Healing is in His name. He can heal.